When it comes to cutting boards, I like them big and beefy because it provides you a solid surface to work on. But they can be expensive. So Adam's here to tell us which one is worth the money. Big and beefy, mm. huh? <laughs> I hadn't used that as a descriptor <laughs> for these, but they are big and beefy. I hate small cutting boards. They offend me personally. They can be lightweight. They can jump around. Compared to a plastic cutting board or a mm. composite cutting board, you get a luxurious cutting experience because they all tend to be a little softer, a lot of space to work with, which you like, I like too. And if you take care of it, you get a board that should last you a lifetime. We have seven boards in our lineup. The price range was about $85 at a low to $240 at a high. Ooh. And the materials ranged from bamboo mm -hmm. to four different kinds of wood. We have teak right here. We have maple. Mm -hmm. We have birch. And then there's a Japanese cypress called hinoki. Oh, cool. Testers minced parsley, they diced onions, they sliced loaves of bread, they pounded chicken cutlets, and they mm. hacked through bone and chicken parts. To test stain and odor resistance, they minced chipotle chilies in adobo oh, sauce and washed off the boards to see how stained and smelly they might have been. All of these boards were washed by hand at least a hundred times. They were maintained with mineral oil as mm. needed, and they also went home with test cooks for some real world, real kitchen testing. And the test cooks reported back over time what they thought. So in terms of size, our recommendation is to get the biggest board that your counter and your <laughs> sink will allow. Also, the biggest board that you can lift comfortably. Do not discount the weight factor with these things. They can be really heavy. The heaviest board in our lineup was about 32 pounds, Oof. and it was this one. All right, Julia, let's see some muscle. Right. Lift it up. I'm see pretty strong. Oh my goodness. This is surprisingly heavy. I'd actually be worried for my safety if I had to carry this across the kitchen to the sink. The sweet spot for weight was about 15 pounds. That was about this one here. Okay. 15 pounds was handleable and still secure. The height of the board or the thickness of the board was also a consideration. Yes. There were taller cooks and some shorter cooks in the, <laughs> the testing squad here. <laughs> some of these boards were as thick as two inches. And if they had feet like this uh -huh. one, it lifted them up even higher, more like three inches. Mm -hmm. That was fine for taller cooks. That put the knife at a nice, you know, comfortable position. For some of the cooks who were not quite as tall, that could be a challenge, and I want you to chop a little parsley <laughs> on this one and just tell me whether it feels natural to you. Or I've had boards like this before, and yeah, the knife is actually way too high for me to be comfortable. This is gonna hurt my shoulder after yep. a couple of minutes. So you definitely wanna pay attention to the height. Mm -hmm. Again, the sweet spot in terms of height was about an inch and a half to two inches. Yep. That was good for most cooks. In terms of the feet, some testers liked them because it was easier to lift the boards, it was easier to get them to dry because they were elevated off the work surface, but they're not reversible, which boards without feet ah. are, so there's an advantage to either or. You know, we wanted to figure out how durable these woods were. We also wanted to see the effect of the wood on the cutting edge of a blade. So we got a little robotic help for that. We got a robot in here from the Autodesk Technology Center in Boston. And the robot was fitted with a brand new factory sharpened knife for each board. The robot used the knife to make 5,000 strikes on each board. Wow. We stopped every 200 cuts so that we could assess the sharpness of the knife by slicing through paper, which is our sort of standard sharpness mm -hmm. test, and also inspect the board, see how that was doing under the stress of all that chopping. All the knives could still cut through paper. It was not quite the same story for the boards. I want you to flip over this one at the end, if you would, please. All right. The Jeff. Oh, <laughs> Look oh. at that. Look at how gouged Oh, that is. no. I'd be mad if this were my board at home. <laughs> now, the robot was adding more pressure than a human would Using normally. Using a really hard strike. Right, yeah. So this is pretty extreme. But over time, this could happen. There is a scale to measure hardness and softness called the Jenka scale. The range in the Janka scale in our lineup was a low of 349 okay. to a high of 1,480. Oh, wow. The board made of teak was 989 on the Janka scale. And we considered that a nice, happy medium. This was soft enough so that it was a nice, luxurious cutting experience, mm -hmm. but hard enough that it would be durable. All right. We have two different types of construction for these boards. This one that your hand is on, mm -hmm. that's called end grain. Yep. And what's going on there is you have a bunch of pieces of wood that are fused together vertically so that the ends are exposed. Mm -hmm. The teak one, that's called edge grain. And you have a bunch of pieces of wood that are fused together horizontally. 
testers actually preferred the edge grain because the end grain boards were more susceptible to moisture absorption. Also, when they were oiling the boards with mineral oil, the end grain boards absorbed more oil than the edge grain boards hmm. did. The teak board actually absorbed the least mineral oil of all. Teak contains a natural resin called tectiquinone hmm. that keeps it conditioned and naturally repels moisture. So this one required a little less maintenance than the others. All right. You know, testers really think that choosing a big cutting board like this is very personal. It depends on how strong you are, how mm. much space you have, how big your sink is, what your aesthetic is. But this one, Teak House by ProTeak Edge Grain Board for about $105, which has been our winner in the past, retains the title as the winner. It's a great choice for a lot of people. It is spacious because it's mm -hmm. 24 inches long by 18 inches wide. It's an inch and a half high. It's 15 pounds, so it's stable enough, but you can still move it around. It was the second least expensive one in the Ooh, whole I lineup like at $105. And we really can stand by this because we've used it in the test kitchen for 10 years and had no issues to report. All right, so it's standing the test of time here. It is. So there you have it. If you're ready to invest in a nice, big, beefy cutting board, look for the Teak House by ProTeak Edge Grain Cutting Board at about $105. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.